Have you ever tried bread making and wondered how the dough becomes firm and stretchy? You started out on a runny mixture, then it gradually becomes a firm and pliable dough as you mixed and kneaded. But what happens in your dough as you mix and knead? In this episode, we will talk about the wonder component in your flour and its role on bread structure. Gluten Gluten is a water-insoluble complex protein network found in wheat grains. Proteins in wheat kernels are typically around 8 to 15 percent, and 85 to 90 percent of which are gluten. Gluten is a mixture of distinct proteins, mainly gliadin and glutenin. Gliadins are responsible for the dough's viscosity and extensibility, while glutenins are responsible for its strength and elasticity. Improving the dough strength, water absorption, moisture retention, and gas retention provides good structure and volume. But how is gluten developed? When you add water to the flour, proteins unfold. Hydrating the gliadin and glutenin, they combine to initiate the gluten network. As mixing continues, series of weak hydrophobic bonding and strong disulfide bonding involving amino acids continually take place, making a larger gluten network. Kneading breaks this bond and causes more realignment of proteins and formation of new disulfide bonds, creating an extensible gluten network. As this realigning and bond formation continue, the dough becomes more and more elastic and will eventually stabilize the dough structure. Once a gluten network is well developed, it can trap and retain as much air bubbles produced by yeast or leaveners during initial baking, resulting to a light, airy loaf. But perhaps you're asking, there are a lot of flours out there, which one should I use? It's helpful to know the amount of proteins in your flour. The higher the protein content, the more gluten tends to develop. Typical yeast breads uses flours with 12 to 13 percent proteins, while whole wheat breads uses 14 to 15 percent protein flours. For tender baked products such as cakes and cookies, use flours with protein contents of 12 percent or lower, since less gluten formation is desirable for these products. After all, you wouldn't want a chewy and pliable cake, would you? Enjoy this video. Be sure to check out our other video about microplastics and how it affects our food. See you again on our next episode.